My name is John Ross with the Art of Retouching Studio, and I would like to show you a way to create selections and masks that are generally easier to create and more accurate as opposed to other selection methods like Quick Selection and Magic Wand. However, in order for this to work effectively, we actually need to change some base settings within Photoshop. What I'd like to do is create a selection around the trees in the background and apply an adjustment layer onto it. Now, arguably, the quickest and easiest way to make a selection inside of Photoshop is to go under Select, Color Range. But Color Range itself has a fundamental problem, which is basically I'm supposed to make an educated decision on what's selected based off of this tiny little thumbnail. Because I have absolutely no idea what is and is not selected, by itself, this isn't the best way of working. Under Selection Preview, we do have the option of selecting one of these other methods, but generally, this isn't going to help us either. Your best option is Quick Mask. However, Photoshop's default, once again, doesn't necessarily show us everything that we want to know. Because it works as a transparent, but I really can't make decisions based off of gradations or other elements that have soft edges. So rather, I want to change this default setting. I'm going to click Cancel, and the settings for Color Range and Quick Mask are down here underneath the colors. You have this square with a circle in it. This is the Quick Mask mode but I don't want quick mask mode, rather I want the settings. So just double click on that icon and it's going to bring this up. And you're going to make two or three different changes. The first one is going to be from masked areas to selected areas, because generally speaking, it's easier to work this way. The other thing we're going to do is change the opacity from 50% to 100%. Once again, it's gonna make it easier for us to see and work. The color itself is subjective. Because I'm working on green, Red is a great color. However, when I deal with portraits, red is a terrible color, and I'll come in here and change it to green instead. This way, there's more contrast and it's easier to see. We click OK, and that actually brings us into quick mask mode, which isn't where I want to be. You can tell because you have this gray around the icon. So you have to click it one more time, and this will bring you back into regular Photoshop. Now I can go select color range. But this time, when I go to Selection Preview, Quick Mask, now you can clearly see what is and is not selected within this image. Now that we've gotten this far, let me show you how this tool actually works. If I click once with the eyedropper, it's going to make this as the selection. If you hold down the Shift key, it's going to give you a plus underneath the cursor. And we can then click again, and it's going to expand that selection. You can also use this icon right here, which is the same thing, but the difference is here you can only add, and with this one, I can hold down the Shift key and add, or I can hold down the Alt key, and that turns it into a minus, and I can remove from the selection. But again, the Alt and the Shift key are the same as just using these icons here. So I'm going to hold down my Shift key, and I'm going to add to my selection, I'm going to grab the green of these trees. Now when I do that, notice it doesn't just grab the green of the trees. It, it's going to grab some other areas that it thinks fall within that same range. But now here's where we need to choose our battles. Because these aren't actually touching anything up here, it's okay. We can remove it after the fact. Areas that are up here that are touching, we're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to refine this mask. But again, it's just choosing your battles and going with the best selection that it will take the least amount of time. And yes, there are little pinholes that are being missed, and that's okay too. We will catch that on the next step. I'm going to click OK, and we now have the selection of these tree line. However, if we zoom in, you can see that we have all these little areas that have been missed. See right here is a good example where we have these little pinholes that could be selected but are currently not. The easiest way to correct this situation right now is to come up under Select, Modify, Expand. And we just go by two pixels, four pixels, completely depends on the image. But when we click OK, notice what happened. It completely filled in all those little pinhole gaps. This is before and this is after. Now right now we have another problem where if I make this adjustment, you can see how it actually gives this haloing effect around areas, and they're a little bit jagged. So this isn't perfect, and we can certainly improve upon it by going one extra step. I'm going to back up and undo 
and undo. So we're back to this selection. And one more step that you can do is select modify feather. And by doing this, it's actually going to soften the edges. So there isn't a hard drop off. Rather, there's a much softer drop off. So that when we do that effect, it's less obvious. So this is an example of an extreme. However, it still looks perfectly OK. So when we actually take this effect and bring it down into something a lot more controlled, it actually looks really good. Now, once again, I'm going to back up a couple steps so I'm back to this selection one more time. Now, I've reached this point in the selection process by going select color range and followed up by select modify expand and once again, select modify feather. And that brought us to this point right here. Now, I want to show you quick mask. When I click on the quick mask icon, which is down here below the colors or otherwise Q on your keyboard, that's going to show us the mask. And as I showed you before, there are areas that are kind of touching and most of this is not. Quick Mask allows you to use all the same tools as Photoshop. The only difference here is that you are working strictly on the mask, not at all on the pixels of the image. We can add to the mask by using black. So black equals the color that you see, whether it's red, green, or anything else. And because we're on black with a paintbrush, I can paint right on it and this is going to add to the selection. When I come out of Quick Mask, you can see I've added to this selection. I'm going to undo, undo. Now I'm going to show you that I can flip this around to white. And in this case, now I'm erasing from the selection. So that when I come out of Quick Mask, you can see I've simply erased. So armed with that knowledge, what we can do to get rid of all these loose areas is simply use a white brush, make it nice and big, and simply paint out the areas that we don't want. And this acts like an eraser. Very quick, simple, and easy. We can also zoom in. And if there's any of these areas that we want to add to the selection, then we flip it around to black. And then we just simply paint in and add to that selection. Now, depending on the complexity of the image, you may have to come in here and do some extra touch up work. Other times you don't. It's completely random and depends on the image itself. But for this example, I'm going to come out of Quick Mask where I have the trees selected and the sky, the water, the boat, and everything else are not selected. Now I can simply click on my adjustment layer, use my curve, and now I'm going to have a nice transition. Aside from me teaching this technique, it would literally have taken me a minute or two to grab this entire tree line. Very quick, very easy. How tight you need to make this mask simply depends on how drastic of a change you're going to make. If you're going to be making something very simple like this, then a loose mask is OK. If you are going to be taking it and doing something drastic like this, then obviously a tighter mask is needed. But for most images, this technique is perfectly fine, and I use it for 99% of the masks that I create. If you found this video helpful, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can learn more tips and tricks to make you a better photo retoucher.